you, so we're okay. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is a good drop. It's going straight across the middle. Milt to power up to Georgie Paul. So it really opens up the map for just about everywhere. It's all going to come down to with this type of pathing where people are going to go for their prime arc positions. You can see everybody's going to pull off of the initial drop because people don't want to really drop directly down so that way they don't feel surrounded. So everybody's going to push as far out as they can. So you can see people are looking towards Stalber, maybe towards that Yasnaya area. A lot of people are going to be pushing back down into the south as much as they can. Also, you're going to have to see a couple of teams potentially securing some vehicles. It's all about resource allocations at this very beginning parts of the game. You want to make sure that you can get to somewhere where you can loot quickly, secure some vehicles, get ready for that first move whenever the circle comes down and shows where you've got to go. Look at Cloud9. They've switched it up. They've obviously been Pachinki in and around there, but they've decided to go for the, the mansion split, obviously the mansion prison, etc. You can see Miraku also in there. So they are going to maybe conflict with Crimson also. Looking at FaZe, FaZe in the standard spot. They've got Milter Power, AAA in Milter. Looks like Penta are going for that split over the farm area. Here in Georgia Paul, you can see um, off in the distance, Corn Shookers and TSM. So TSM resorted back to that North Georgia mm -hmm. Paul drop, but they may have to mix it up with Corn Shookers. And Corn Shookers, we saw them in the last game. They're not afraid to fight. They passed by Penta. Penta took shots at them. They pulled up the vehicles and wiped out Penta. Corn Shookers has been sneaking up the ladder. For being the, uh, one of the unsigned teams here, they've been kind of climbing out. Well, lately. first first kill. Your boy Dre down already for Tempo. I mean, Tempo are in second place right now, and they've lost one man to Leighton out of a uh, vehicle out of all things to finish it off. So Leighton's just doing his nice little drive around. You know, he's got to be feeling pretty good. Doesn't have any armor, doesn't have any guns, just kind of chilling out like, nah, who needs that? Kind of coming up, trying to find where they're going to go to. Looks like they're going to stop the Wizard Tower. And the first circle is up, and it's going to favor everybody that actually pushed towards that Georgia Pool location. You can see down around Pachinki, everybody's kind of off on this far eastern side, is going to have to very quickly reposition back over. All those teams in that northern Georgia Pool area with Corn Shuckers and TSM, they're going to have to figure out how they're going to play inside of here because now they could have these neighbors for quite a while. Well, we've seen NIP dropping into obviously school. You can see them in your uh, map just there. They were into school and the apartments area. I did just see Hayes actually in apartments as well. So from Liquid. Liquid have gone for a very split drop. Uh, but here we can see Tempest on uh, Valiant and Duck right next to each other. Mini 14s. They've got the ARs already. So both these guys are locked and loaded for action. And honestly, they're going to have to engage each other because there's no easy way out. There's no vehicles that I can see so far either way. They may be on the road just to the left hand side. Uh, meanwhile, also Gems. Gems has got another Ronin player. It's not a developer right above him. Penta, they need kills. They have no kills so far. So keep your eye on this one. It's Duck going to take the first couple of shots there. Doesn't really land anything. Takes a hell of a beat in. He's going to get pushed, Ooh. but he gets the knock on Valiant. And Valiant goes down. Jims gets the first kill for Penta as well, as not a developer goes down. And this is going to be extremely influential. We've seen one person go down from each side of this. We're seeing a lot of quote unquote trash looting that's coming out right now. Everybody's trying to separate out. Now, the problem with that is with this early casualties coming into play, all of these teams are still not inside the circle. So they have to try to regroup and get inside the circle. And as you can see on that eastern side of the circle, just like right below the river, it is really, really populated over there. So all these teams are going to have to try to figure out some type of path. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of teams potentially push to the north side of this, go around the river and try to find some of that dead zone that's around the shooting range. There's North Georgia Pole once again. You can see. Corn Shookers and TSM are kind of divided it up and said, okay, fine. You take the west, we'll take the east. We kind of have these both covered off. Got to hunt for those vehicles early on because they only have to travel a little bit further south. Noble sitting there. You can see Sovnovka very much all in EG's hands, and it has been for the last few rounds, actually. EG, they're off in Novo this time. They decide to go that way. But it's, it's this coastline that I'm interested in. You can see Digital Chaos in there, Ronin in there, Penta in there. And if you head mm -hmm. over to Milty, you can see AAA in there. So it's very uh, a clustered separation of buildings. But there's not a lot of loot when you start looking at four squads in the same zone. And that becomes a big factor inside of this, is trying to acquire that loot. You know, everybody wants to see the big shootout that's happening, but you have to remember that PUBG is a survival game, and that's what all these teams are trying to play for right now. Everybody's just trying to acquire whatever they can, so that's why you can see so many people are so separated out. But now they're trying to get to that regroup stage. You can see they got about two more minutes before they really have to start coming through, and it's first circle. It doesn't hurt the worst. So as long as you've got some painkillers, you can kind of go the TSM strategy, kind of just tank the blue as much as you can to try to acquire that loot. We can come over here. We're seeing Andy Pyro going around trying to get what loot that he can. But whenever we're talking about resources, we're not just talking about loot per se. You want to try to acquire vehicles. You want to shoot out the tires on vehicles around you. All of these things can be really, really influential for late game. And Pinta now coming up, getting their second kill, going to go take down Duck over there. Gems again as well. So he's got himself his second kill. 
Absolutely something Penta need. Andy Pyro, it's actually, we, while we're looking at Method here, it's something we should talk about, obviously, with the spawn drops. And we've talked about the fact that Phase go into Milton Power, Method go into Pachinki. It's kind of like an unwritten rule between the teams that, like, the respect is there that, okay, you're going there, we know you're going to have that. We don't want to fight early on against you guys. Well, sometimes yes and sometimes no. The later we get into this, you might see a couple of these teams go, okay, that's it, we need these kills. Let's just drop where we know people are going to be at. I think that's kind of what we're seeing from Pinta right now, is they're kind of getting this middle area of the map where they know somebody's going to be around them, so that way they can secure some kills, get some extra loot, especially when you're going with that trash loot strategy where you're just kind of all separating out. Securing these kills, coming back over here, as you can see, dropping down, trying to get that little bit of extra loot, and uh-oh, looks like we can see that Wind and Rain is coming up right on top of Luminosity gaming. JP2 is coming around this angle. He got seen, but he's trying to retreat back. He's going to go back inside this yellow building, but it's just oh, nowhere for him to go. He's gotten taken out really early in this game. Yeah, and mid, mid reload as well. I mean, he, he got clipped on the side. So Wind and Rain picking themselves up some kills them themselves. They've had a, a fairly successful time. They're mid table at 10th place. And here we go. MK14, 8 times scope, uh, military vest as well. So Decent amount of loot in there. I think that was uh, Method that picked it up. Yeah, mm -hmm. Energetic Turtle, the man that the uh, observers absolutely love, I think, for the last two games. We're seeing him once again. Well, he's got a fun name, Energetic Turtle, you know. <laughs> it's one of the more... Definitely he used one to have a very different time. name that we can't really uh, go to on, on air, I think. Well, that's kind of the thing with oh. it. And you can see the LG looks like they're getting a little bit of vengeance back there, taking down somebody from uh, Ninjas and Pajamas, getting a kill onto Crunch there. We can see that Ronan's doing an approach off to the side, trying to get up on top of this crate, get something out of it. They're having to bandage up, taking a couple of shots. Look at that buggy. It's already lost a couple of tires. It's smoking out right now, trying to figure out where he's going to get back out and away from here. You can see down on the mini-map, there's a lot of bullets flying back his direction while his squad mates are trying to protect him. Method's coming back up now. He knows exactly where he's at. Trying to put some shots back down on the Kraken, and he does go down. Mini Fridge Jr on the back side of this, and I think he's just going to go out and abandon this. It's it's not often you see the pro teams fighting for the crates. I mean, uh, we know for a fact because we saw them. Mm -hmm. Method already took the loot. So poor old Ronan gone in there to try and get the crate. And they've already It's already been looted. It's gone, and they've lost a the man for it. It's uh, been a real poor choice from the leader of that team at the moment. But uh, Method... Pretty happy in Pachinki at the moment, gathering up the vehicles as well. You can see they've got themselves four in there. Talking going back to Luminosity, obviously Luminosity, one of the teams that have been struggling, uh, down in 18th place in terms of kills, 14th place for 160 points. So getting the kills early on, especially for Ninja, who's not had a good first few rounds. Here we see Trapelli, he finishes off Mole Man, and well, Liquid lose a man and a vehicle there. When did Rain really actually start to show up inside this round? They're going around trying to find anybody that they can, try to secure those kill points inside of here. We're coming back over here with Noble, who's had a very interesting set of series so far. They're controlling one of these flat tops. Specifically in this range, you have to really, really like with the positioning for this. They have a nice sight line going over all the fields around them. They can see anybody that's going to reposition back down from Georgia Pool. So you're starting to see different teams opt into different hold points. Specifically, we know that the transition is where you see the most death come out. And speaking of death, we can see Texas does get taken down. Crimson Esports going that's off inside there, and now we're seeing him get taken out. Yeah, a couple of kills traded between Miami Flamingos and Crimson there. They've been trading back and forward as that's been going on. That's all open yet. I mean, that's well outside the uh, certain zone at the moment. Scoom is off on his own in that way. This is It's a horrific place to be fighting barefoot, which basically these two teams are at the moment. In the, in the cornfields of Yasnaya, it's just not one place you want to be, especially when the circle's a long way away. And maybe this is what we're starting to see. We expected it, obviously, with the first two games, very tense. Everyone's going to be a little cautious. Now we're starting to see people just flat out engaging. And also, I guess, since they're fighting here, lacking vehicles in Yasnaya, there's a chance that probably just wasn't oh. one in the, in the bush there. Tony lands another, and it's just Miracle. Miracle, the last man standing, I think, for Crimson. It looks to be the case, and that's what you're going to have to see. Oh, we have somebody approaching right on top of Timso Storm. So you can see that Samty has got a nice control here. He's going to manage to take this out and finish off that kill. Oh, oh the Pan's actually got a couple of deflects on there, so Samty <laughs> does get the kill in the end on the solid <laughs> FPS. So he's kind of controlling this other area. You're going to see a lot of these squads start trying to hold down different locations so that way they can see sight lines over these fields. And right now we're seeing what used to be called the Invisibles that they're trying to hold down. Pinta's making their approach back now as well. It's all going to come down to where everybody's going to position because as we're moving closer and closer to what could be a Gatka game, everybody's trying to avoid those cornfields for the exact reasons we saw just a second ago. It's just kind of a death trap right now, especially with Everest still in play. We're sitting up on top of this, and you can just see that you can see for so far with these scopes, with these sniper rifles. Liquid's in just a great spot right now, and you can see Method, Energetic Turtle's just like, nope, we can't make that push.
push up there. Somebody's up on the top of that. If we try to aggress up on top of here, we're just going to get taken down on the approach. So they're having to back out. Use the trees. Use the terrain. Try to find somewhere else safe to go to. Retreat back to your teammates. Yeah, it's liquid that's up there. You can see Hollywood and uh, Hayes. Scoom is miles away. Scoom's actually going up to shooting range. So he's way off at the moment from his team. Uh, Miami Flamingo is the only other team that's not really in there. Triple A just dribbling into the circle. So just about everyone into this circle, obviously, it's looking like it's maybe centralizing on, like you say, on Everest. It could, of course, swing down. We just saw TSM getting that uh, that swing of theirs. TSM themselves, they're up in North Georgia, Paul. I know you guys, a lot of people in the chat are very interested in how they are. They're still obviously on the loot. It's worked out very well for them. And it's, it's one of those bonuses. If you drop in one of those areas on the first, second circle, stays in your zone, you could just loot for days, especially in Georgia, because there's so many places to loot. Well, one of the things that I do want to talk about is how we can see all these teams right now opting into a center strategy. The reason why everybody's kind of condensing around the center area points on the circle is there's just a mathematical advantage to being there. There's less of a chance for you to have to move. And if you end up having to move, that's where all of these teams that are already positioned, you have to run into their sight lines. We can see that Scoop right now, Genesee. everybody's just trying to hold down different spots. Got a couple of shots going back right now between looks to be Wind and Rain and Profi. And it uh, looks like Monkey is just trying to make an approach, find somewhere for him to post up into. And with this positioning that we're seeing from the circle, a lot of these teams are opting into terrain locations instead of building locations. We've seen this to be a little bit weaker as we've gone on. All these teams that are trying to hold down buildings, unless you end up with like one of the god complexes, you can kind of find yourself being aggressed on by too many different angles. Because that's the big thing. Sure, it's nice to have like whenever the circle favors you, but you have to make sure that you're holding all of the angles as it comes in. Nobody can come in. You have to hold down this real estate and make sure nobody comes around you and hopefully secure those kills, get the loot off of it. But here we go. We're starting to see all of the circle come in now. Everybody's starting to push back in. Our Georgia Pool guys up on top. We can see the TSM. They're going to have to make their move here in a little while. We can see that we've got Miami Flamingos holding down the other side on the northern corners. But just about everybody else is already inside the safe zone. You can see that Skoom is going to be coming in on his vehicle now, coming over with a Daculus. And now, this is one of the things that we do need to talk about, is the position of the circle and most of the teams. Everything's just kind of out in the open. So you can kind of see a little bit of every single one of the buildings just based on this location. We're seeing NIP right now playing a very nice spot. It's going to be right up on top. You're going to play this little bit of terrain right next to you and get nice shots onto the buildings around you. So Borg's having to do a little bit of a retreat as he's taking some damage. But you can see you've got all these nice little areas of the map that you can hide in these little dips that you can step back out, take a shot, come back down, and maybe get some meds off. Yeah, and obviously going by the second circle, it, it's not a lot of teams are going to have to move. It's going to be a quiet period. It's going to be a lot of uh, positional uh, prowess, long-range shots, trying to get the snipes off. We talked about AAA. Obviously, they do tend to favor this sort of zone. Uh, Liquid and Alliance trading blows, but it's long-range again as well across the map. Uh, Everybody is kind of in a pretty comfortable position. Here's the uh, split screen at the moment for Digital Chaos. You can see these guys, um, positional-wise, they are actually down south of Gatka. They're looking in towards Chopsticks. Um, actually, just, just south of uh, AAA, there. you can see Jockeys. Jockeys, if you look at Jockeys' position, he's the one that's scouting right now. He's taking shots from Penta. They're heading in towards Gatka. He's going to get himself the position to say, yes, Gatka is currently fairly clear. Um, the complex in and around here. So it is fairly safe to get in there. So at the moment, they are obviously sitting pretty at the top because of that fantastic first round. They didn't have a set great second round, but it doesn't matter. They had 15 kills, 300 points, uh, 450 in total from that first round. Mexi lands shots onto Hayes. Now, that's Hayes who was sitting on the hillside, Everest, just the, the east side of Everest. Faye's actually in the ruins at the moment. They're sitting pretty in the ruins. And big shots, actually, as Miami Flamingos move past the Corn Shokers and Alliance. And now we start to see it. People trying to start fighting for that real estate. We talked about it beforehand. It's so dangerous to come into these circles late. You can see Alliance is holding down a nice fortification right near the edge of the circle that's already kind of forced Miami Flamingos Zentrix down into the water over there. We've already got one person playing Mermaid, but it's not his choice. He got shot off, so he had to jump back down inside there. TSM is going to be following along this path here potentially relatively soon. I think they heard a couple of bullets coming this way, but popping over here with Corn Shuckers, you can see that these guys are playing right along the edge, so any of these teams that come back in around from Georgia Pool potentially get the kills onto them, net some free loot out of that on top of what you've already got. Now you can see that Noble's actually doing a good job of trying to maintain some type of sight line over towards Everest, so that way nobody can really get positioned up there where it looks like ninjas in pajamas, and I, no, actually that's going to be Miami Flamingos that's doing the push up there. 
It's so Taking shots from so far away, it was hard to make out the name tags there. <laughs> so now we're coming back over here with Noble, who's still holding down on right around this, uh, the hospital area. And now this is all coming down to how TSM does this approach. They know that they're going to be coming into what could potentially be hot zones. Surely they've been hearing the shots as they come through. And they're mm. actually fairly unequipped. If you can see that for as long as they were looting up there, they had Georgia Pole loot. But NPR is still rocking right now a level one helmet. So he knows that he, he heard some shots. You can see that he's trying to do a slow peek around, figure out where they're going to be coming from. Looks like he's doing a little bit of scouting for the rest of his team. All the rest of them are playing back along the terrain, kind of holding inside the hills, providing him some level of cover as he pushes forward. And this, but, this is something that TSM do. This is, this, is mm -hmm. a, this is a tactic. Like, obviously, a lot of teams will focus on getting in the center. As we can see, if you look at uh, Ghost, they are bang central at the moment, Pensafelli central. TSM are the one of the teams that have chosen to play on the outside. They want to avoid the chaos. Mm -hmm. And there's different strategies that come in. We were talking about the importance of trying to center. Some teams actually just prefer to get away from all of that, and that tends to be a TSM strategy. They don't want to come in until they feel it's safe enough for them to do so, and they're not opposed to tanking the blue in order to avoid some of this early combat. Because again, as like we were talking about a second ago, it's a survival game. Losing members early just makes it harder for you to win the game. So if you end up opting into this later push, it's kind of, it's dangerous because you have to go through more squads, but you also do avoid a little bit of combat and a Car 98 yeah, crate. Nobody likes a Car 98 crate. It, it's such a safe crate for Noble as well, and they're going to be disappointed when they get to it, that's for sure. <laughs> they get a med kit. That's probably the best thing I hope for that. And that. I'm pretty sure they're all rocking some sort of sniper of their own at the moment. I can see Mini 14s already. Looking at TSM, they are slowly creeping into that circle. is the only one that's outside of it. They're actually in a pretty close proximity. You can see Corn Shookers off in the distance. They're losing Paradox, Zanta, etc. All over there. Cloud9, they won the last round. Very good positional setup for them and Corn Shookers Envy has just been downed by break so they're taking shots and that was just inside the building so his teammates would be able to get him up that's no too much of a problem there but already taking shots I didn't expect that so peeking a little too much TSM bearing in mind looking at him Smack has himself a level 3 vest so while the rest of his teams have not been so successful with that level 1 helmets looks like Smack's been getting the lion's share of loot well, that's the big factor inside of this. We talked about, sure, whenever you're holding down a building, that's fine and good, but you have to make sure you hold down all the sight lines around. Using that early push that we saw coming out from TSM, he secured, he got the information, he said, okay, there's people over here. Now then, this is going to be our approach path, and then we're going to get some shots onto them. Sure, no kill's going to come out, but this is kind of a game of attrition. You want to burn off meds. You want to burn off armor. Anytime you can get those downs and those shots, it just makes it easier to push into the late game. Okay, here we go, third circle. About to pop in. Where are we going? Yeah, there we go. Oh. It's actually very similar to the last game. It's just a little west of where we finished in the last matchup. Obviously, we were just south of Pachinki. So it's going to force people into chopsticks. It's going to force people into those complexes. And look at against all authority. They are in prime position. They're already positioned themselves like, OK, let's get the best complex we know. Really, there isn't anyone near us. EG are close by. Digital Chaos are looking for it, but it's going to start getting chaotic. Look at the ridge. A lot of, a lot of people moving in. Method using three people in a vehicle. This is something that's starting to come in. Actually, all four of them. That is so, so dangerous if they get taken out. Wind and rain looks like they're putting a pile in there. You can see Hollywood trying to get the shots off. Trifeli did get knocked. He jumped out of the vehicle a little too early. The fat fingers on jumping out of that car before it stops. It's going to cost him. Trifeli taking very low. His team are not going to be able to get him up as Hollywood gets the kill. And this is a very strong building complex. You can see that Liquid's trying to take right now from wind and rain. There's a lot of secure points that you can play around it. Just because you can play the outer walls that the, the hills kind of make around it, there's a couple of buildings inside there you can kind of play around. So you get a not, lot of nice sight lines to make sure that you can secure safety for your team. But look at this method coming off to the side, getting nice shots onto Khan off the side. Wookie Bookie's trying to figure out how, where those are coming from, retreats back behind the vehicle there. So Andy Pyro is doing a slow creep through the bushes, being all sneaky. Coming back over there, you can see that off to the side of them is still Liquid. So there's three different squads all trying to push for this prime real estate. You can see the nice flank coming out. Andy Pyro is trying to come around the outside of it, but Liquid still kind of forced back into their spot. They've now heard the shots coming off to what would be their left. They know that they have wind and rain that's in front of them. They just kind of want to play this as slow as possible and get a feel for what's happening around them. We've got Luminosity, TSM, and FaZe all collecting into the same spot as well. While this is all happening, which is why you can see the knocks. Break just got knocked down by, uh, killed actually by Chipsy in the end there. As FaZe moved away in, there's Chipsy taking the shot. So there's TSM in the vehicles. Oh, so close. Frolicker, meanwhile, hitting Noble. That's off on the far west coast at the moment. So everybody tries to fight for these positions. Drassel also taking Smackdown. So TSM losing members here. They are down one. If Smack goes down, that will make it two. Andy Pyro continue to try and push on. Wind and Rain here. Gustav getting hit. 
Wookie Wookie taking hits, the spray coming out, but Andy Pyro not really connected. Meanwhile, AT does. He gets himself one onto Gustav and Wind and Rain. They're getting picked off from left and right. And it's all about the slow push that we're seeing coming out from Andy Pyro. The rest of his team's trying to hold down one area, kind of force. You can see that Wind and Rain is kind of being forced back, trying to hop into some vehicles, but it's just not going to pay off for him as Andy Pyro is trying to net that spray. Can't quite secure it. And is he going to be able to make it away? No, a vehicle explosion is going to take oh, him down. Oh, Simsy stole the kill, though. Simsy stole it there. There's the vehicle kill explodes. That's not going to be too happy, but FaZe, they're starting to pick off kills on uh, Luminosity as well, so they're in trouble. They're, that's FaZe, they're creeping in from uh, Ruin's side. They're starting to work it towards just the west side of Pachinki at the moment as they creep in. Here's Alliance, they've been in a good position. It's Penta in Jumpsticks at the moment. They are going to start taking nades. It's like, while you're good, you're down in that low position. You can't really take a great deal of two shots, and obviously grenades coming your way are going to be like homing pigeons as they try and land down there. Penta taking a knock there. Look at this. They are really in trouble. Alliance going to try and push up. We saw how good VZ and 60 could be on the flank in the last match. This is just a catastrophe right now for Pinta. You can see on the minimap how many people are down. They don't know if they should be going for the reses on it. Three people down from the squad right now. The push is coming out and coming their direction, but we're now back over here at this other yellow complex that we were talking about beforehand. Liquid's still trying to push in onto this. Method, Method took it. Method yeah. did manage to force Wind and Rain out, and here we go. Alliance does step right back up, and you can see Simsy's just going to take a whole bunch of bullets, and I think that that is going to be it for Pinta, and they are having a rough series today. That is not going well for them. They did cut a, bit, a couple of kills early on, but nah, it is still not a high finish still 52 alive which means they're way outside the top 10 at the moment Scoom, as i say liquid were in that complex they've been forced out by method so method brute forcing their way in it is a very good complex as you just saw there with Scoom, there is just that little lip that looks into the yellow houses so it's a really nice complex i'm looking towards this next circle and oh my word eg are right in the middle of it it's going to force triple a to move they're down at south chopstick so they were looking towards alliance uh, and you can see it looks like tempo storm once again who are doing very well in this tournament so far are in a great position. Chappie just comes in. He's scouting for Cloud9. It looks like he's well much on his own looking towards the rest of his team. They are way away. It looks like Frex has been already hit. So he actually may be the last man standing now as well as TSM creep in. TSM be playing on the edge, but they are in a great position right now. Face have to push in behind oh. them, but look at the west side. Everybody's starting to creep in, and they're all going in towards AAA. Here we see Method. They had that complex early on. They fought so hard for it, but they have to give it up. It's just a point, you have to retreat back up. You got about a minute and 18 seconds. Everybody wants to move early because with 48 people still alive, you don't want to be the last group that's trying to push into the circle. But with this, we're seeing so many small fights that are happening on the outside. Oh, McCoy's vehicle is on fire, about to explode. He does manage to get out and away from it. McCoy's been doing a good job of being the survivor for Ghost Gaming right now, trying to make it back over the rest of his team. You can see that Prop is off in the distance, trying to put a little bit of pressure onto Evil Geniuses. Meanwhile, a teammate's just coming through. To finally just on his motorcycle, just cutting through as fast as he can. But does does get taken down by himself, gets knocked out from falling, motorcycle things. We're, we're not seeing it on the screen, but AAA are literally in the middle of a firefight right now. He did see Ghost Gaming took up a couple of kills. You see also Digital Chaos coming up behind them, kind of like wedged between them as it were. EG still have this great complex in the middle, the only team that really has a, a set complex, and they're going to be the ones that get pushed. You can see Ghost trying to work their way in there, but it is the corn truckers getting picked off the side there as Nomi manages to get himself the one kill. Method are leaving it late to move in. They're picking off the Miami Flamingos, they've already taken down Team Liquid, they've already taken down Wind in the Rain, they want more kills, and you know, it doesn't matter if you don't get that first place, if you get, start racking yourself up 10-15 kills, it can help you. FaZe and TSM, they're engaging off the side as we watch McCoy trying to get his teammates up, you can see on the kill feed, the Corn Truckers are losing players, while Rock says from against all authority, it is all happening, it's always in and around the 4th and 5th circle. That's where all of the catastrophes just start happening. We can see now that Ghost Gaming has finally managed to group back up. They're looking back over towards Evil Geniuses. This is going to be right in the center of this circle. So you can see that while it's fine and good to have some level of control over this, Ghost Gaming really wants to try to push EG out of here. But this is going to be kind of awkward because they're both on different sides of the road, and neither one actually wants to push back over because nobody wants to run across that field, especially at close range, into people with good shots to this. Yeah, I mean, I love watching the uh, the setup here and EG, they're in a perfect position, but I'd love to see the TSM phase fight that's been happening for the last five minutes. At the moment, it's continuing to go on in the north area of this. EG, they're very much sitting pretty in this complex. They've got the individual players in and around the complexes, but they're not really being pushed too much for it. So the action is happening on the edges of the circle at the moment because they are basically banging the center. You can see Ghost Gaming off the side there. They're all kind of 
have their own ground. But FaZe, obviously a team that really need the points in this game, are in trouble. And look at the next circle. It's straight in a perfect position for EG, Ghost Gaming, and Method. And Ghost need the points. They definitely do. But speaking of teams that need some points right now, we can see TSM is making a push. Finally did secure control over this northeastern section of the circle. Trying to figure out if they can get some reses back onto some of their teammates here. Looking back around, you can see FaZe is just down the slope from them. That's why the grenades are coming back out. Fuzz FaZe is just barely back up and rezzed. So now we're going to see AMPR trying to get some control. A minute and 30 seconds before everybody has to force their way down through here. We still have 36 people up and alive, and that is a nice explosion that's coming out there. Fuzz FaZe has gotten taken down. You can see Gypti's off in the background. This is just going to be a hard push from TSM. I think that they know they have control now. They they're just going to push up on top of this hill, and they're just hunting for Gypti. Yeah, I mean, they can't they can't go any further because Tempo Storm are right there. So they're basically caught between TSM and Tempo Storm. These guys are racking up the points, and it has not been a, a good day for FaZe fans out there so far. Obviously, coming into this one as, I would say, strong favorites. They've had such a strong showing in the online tournaments, uh, but it isn't to be so far today as Haxi goes down to Viz, and that leaves Yempty as the only man standing. His brother, by the way, on Tempo Storm, I believe, is still alive. Yeah, his brother's just behind him. That is Samti. Uh, that's the empty's brother. So they're actually close on by. We could possibly see brother-on-brother -brother action here as uh, TSM look to start moving. Let's have a look. They've got 30 seconds. They still have a fair bit of distance to travel outside of this blue circle to try and get in there. Chappie's sitting pretty, but at EG and Ghost Gaming, they've been the ones that have basically sat in this complex. They're looking at Method. Method pretty confident at the moment. They have the complex. Uh, they don't have a complex. They basically made their own complex but with the vehicles. Look at this. Noble is actually starting to push into this fight that we've been seeing that's going on between Ghost Gaming and Evil Geniuses for quite a while. Ninjas in Pajamas is doing a full push back out and around. Everybody's just trying to figure out how they're going to make a push inside Side of this circle. Noble is coming right back up and it looks like Nomi does see them, but they did manage to make it over into those crates. So they do have some level of control right now. They have a little bit of, they can play those outer walls and kind of come back around on the outside of this. So it's all going to come down to evil geniuses now. They're just starting to get flanked and pushed from multiple different directions. Sure, it's nice to have a little bit of circle favor come your way, but with squad after squad starting to stack up on top of you, it gets to be really, really hard to hold this and survive through. Oh no, I think Viz just uh, got knocked out of his vehicle or dropped out of the vehicle, Riley, in the translation. Uh, that's not good. Chappie getting tagged up, but does get taken down. It's McCoy that lands that kill, and suddenly everybody moves in. Noble are getting pushed. Monkey comes in and around there, so AAA trying to take their position. They're still sitting on the edge. They still have three members alive, AAA. Remember, they had a very good finish in the first round, but didn't have too much success in the second. And the circle comes in, and Method are perfectly in the position once again. They positioned their vehicles in there a long time ago, and now everybody has to cross very much an open field in into the hands of Method. Method could rack themselves up a lot of kills if they can deal with Alliance who are currently behind them. You can see Method has managed to secure one of the few remaining buildings. Sure, it's a shack. It's not the most preferable thing on the face Th of the they earth. They have the vehicle set but to they a do ring have around the vehicle well, around yeah. it. Yeah, so they have a little bit of control coming out. Now, the big thing on it is all of these squads that we saw that were holding down those yellow buildings beforehand, they're going to have to disengage and come up into this area. And that's probably where a big yeah. firefight is going to be occurring at. You can see a couple of downs have already started coming out inside of here. Noble's pushing right up on top of Ghoul. They're trying to make their way inside of here. Oh, Meanwhile, wow. Nomi's trying to provide a little bit of cover fire. Daculus really wants to push inside of this. They know that there's several squads that are around here, and they just have to fight their way inside of this. Multiple people for evil geniuses are actually well, one oh. person's down off to the side. Nomi's yeah. trying to do a run forward right now. So TSM are pushing. You can see Aimpro. He's coming in behind Sweater. Smacks has been taken down. So Aimpro, the last man standing for TSM as they move in. Sweater also down. The rest of his team not going to be able to help him out. So he will be finished off, I feel, by Aimpro. Uh, they are two signing. Is it Sweater and Crunch together? I would assume so. Aimpro is the one that's trying to creep up on him. Is it? No, it's not. It's X actually that's with him, and he has managed to get him up. Here comes Ghost Gaming. They have started to make the move outside of the, uh, the the complex that they're in. Obviously, EG sticking in there because Noble's in their back. Triple A, meanwhile, they're creeping their way in towards the circle. Aim Pro once again, looking to try and get himself some shots off there. Ghost Gaming take him down in the end from range. It's a fight that he wasn't hoping to get engaged on, but Ghost Gaming, they needed a big round and they're starting to get it here. Looks like EG are in trouble now. It's, it's a case of who they get in there. And this is all because Method have been completely distracted by, by Alliance. Now they've taken him down. Now the kills start rolling in. You can see Ghost Gaming starting to pick up a lot of kills. 
They've not had the circle advantage too much in their favor, but they are starting to work it. Now, Triple A, who've been sitting quite pretty on the edge, don't have a great deal of cover. Look at them. They're in open fields on the left-hand side. You see Ghost in there, Define Legit and Profi, who've been looking for kills throughout it. Well, Define Legit has found them. McCoy, who's been the last man alive for them for the last two rounds, has gone down outside the zone. And suddenly, with 12 alive, we have four squads in there. It's Method, it's NIP, it's Ghost Gaming, and Triple A. And we saw that with that fight that was happening down in the southeastern corner where those yellow buildings were at, they just couldn't disengage and took so much damage from the circle as they were coming back through. We do see Ghost Gaming does manage to survive through it, though. Well, the circle just changed, and Method now have to move. They haven't had to move for the last three circles. They've been in a very good position, but they have to come across. But look at AAA. They are absolutely scrounging for any sort of cover, but they're belly crawling in there while everybody fights. Andy Pyro finds himself the kill on Sweater. X is the last man standing there. Ghost Gaming have been picked off. It's AAA with three alive, Method with four alive, and NIP with just the one. It's AAA, the only team at the moment that are in that circle, but they have no cover. They are on a repair road. It is a bush wookie for Shadow. Hey, sometimes just hiding outside the bushes. That'll be fine. They do have a little bit of a ridge that they can play along. So they're just kind of slow pushing inside this. They know that everybody's going to have to come down around them. And they seem to have a good idea on where Method is, just due to how Method all the shots come out. Here we go. You can see Leighton. He's going to get piling across. The newest member of Method is going to get spotted out by Shadow there. Oh, he knocked himself as he came out. Shiv did take a shot, a single bullet on the vehicle, but I'm pretty sure he downed himself there, jumping out of that car a little too early. X is already moving in for it. X is coming across. Shiver just got down by Energetic Turtle. It is going to be Shadow and Monkey, the last two that can stand for them. Monkey, you can see with nothing that he gets down. Shadow, the last man standing. Looks like it's going to be NIP to get picked up as well. Method should surely take this unless Shadow can go absolutely huge. AT finds himself the shot, and it is one man, Shadow, who just lays in, lays in wait, finds himself one. Can he get the other two as he pushes on? The blue is on him. It's going to be hurting so much. Just 11 bullets in the gun as he finds Energetic Turtle and Andy Pyro has to get the reload, goes for the first aid, and it is certainly doable. Energetic Turtle is going to be in the zone first. Shadow has to move, and look at this. And oh. he absolutely has him down, dead to rights, and Method put themselves up a rack of kills. 17 kills in that round for Method. Absolutely brilliant round from them. And again, we're seeing a very strong performance coming out from our top performing team. Method was definitely needing those kills to come through there, and they were needing that win. And that is gonna, just going to shoot them straight up through the leaderboard. Additionally, we have been talking quite a bit about AAA or against all authority. They come out very strong in this, not netting as many kills, all things considered, but a couple of these teams that we haven't really seen showing up on the leaderboard, such as Ninjas in Pajamas, Ghost Gaming, Noble, they do all secure top five finishes with several kills apiece. Meanwhile, phase down in 10th, Pinter way outside. This has not been a good day for them. Obviously, there is another five rounds to go, so still plenty of time to pull those points back. But wow, what a round from Method. You know, they dived into Pachinki, if it's center map, it's why you go there. It gives you a really good advantage. They were pretty much in the circle for a large portion of it. They were in and around Chopsticks. Remember, they, they fought, they took down Liquid, they yep. fought, they took down uh, the next team as well. They just pushed the way in. They didn't have it easy. They had to fight their way through it. Wind and Rain as well, they took down, I believe, as well. So they really have fought for this first place position. It's not one of those times where you just sit there and wait and look for that couple of kills. And if you look down the board, you know, AAA didn't have a great deal of cover. NIP, three kills across them. So while it does third place, it doesn't neck them that much. It's, what, 220 points total, whereas 17 kills and a first place for Method, that is massive, massive amounts. 470 points, I believe. Just total. off of that round. Just off that singular round. It could actually rocket them into first place. Well, we've been seeing, we'd have to go back and look through. I'm trying to see where did we see that digital chaos came out inside of there. Looks like they didn't make it into the top 12 that round, not from where I can see yet. So that's definitely mm. going to open up the leaderboard. We do still have one more round inside of here. So we're seeing a lot of variants come out inside of where the teams normally play at and where they're starting to place into. Naturally, we start to see at this point some level of control start coming out from one of the teams. Like they're saying, hey, I've got this, I've got this. But now we're actually starting to see the teams separate out. Well, guys, you've seen the man performing so well. It is Andy Pyro standing by for the Xfinity interview with Richard Sims. Thank you very much indeed, D-Man. Ladies and gentlemen, round number three goes to Method. Andy, 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 first question then. How's it feel, man? Ch chicken dinner under the belt, day number one. It feels good. Yeah? Right? The old, same old feeling. The same feeling as games go, it feels good. It feels good performance, clean, clean performance. It feels good. We knew we could do it. Now, let's talk about your kind of journey here. Obviously, you were one of the invited teams. 
You've been to uh, you've been to a team house. You've been practicing together. Obviously, you've made a team change. It was a, a substantial team change when you kind of swap out a team captain. You swap out the in-game leader there. You know, when you come to that point, there's a lot of work to be done. How kind of how has this affected you and your team practice, swapping out your captain and bringing in a new player leading into this competition? It's everything just went better. We got someone who listens, and I took the shot calling play mainly on the teams, and then the team talks to me, and we trust each other. So we actually got the spirit in, in the team. We Everybody trusts each other. This is uh, works four minds as one. Kind of looking at you guys, you know, everyone's kind of been changing things up a bit. We know you guys are big... Uh, Big Pachinki fans. Sticking to your guns, though. At the moment, you're kind of sticking to that to that one tactic, kind of go there. I'm assuming you guys have got something in the bag should you need to go somewhere else and do something else? No, well, basically, we've been training Pachinki so much that we, we're holding the strong point. Unless someone challenges us, then we're going to use the experience in Pachinki to actually, like, get it out. We've got plenty of plans, but we're using them one by one if it's necessary. All right, then, final question. Obviously, you're a big streamer. You've got plenty of people behind you. To everyone that's kind of subbed to you, donated, supported, followed you through your journey from the start to the finish, what do you got to say to all your fans out there and at home right now? Ladies and gentlemen, Andy Pyro on Team Method. Congratulations once again, guys. We're going to a very short break. Don't go anywhere. We're right back for game number four.